Then we had this MJF promo, and uh, this probably was the best promo I've ever heard this guy cut. He comes out, he's already It's one of the best years. promos that anyone's ever... I mean, seriously, this was one of the... This was an all... T- when this promo was over, I, I thought, like, this is like an all-time classic promo, like the, the kind that, like, you would remember for 20 years. Um, I think because there's so much stuff with wrestling, I don't know that, like... Uh, there's so much that I don't know the stuff stands out like before when you would get something like like now, you know, you're you know, we got look, we had Eddie Kingston doing a great promo on the same show and John Moxley's fantastic on promos and all this before, you know, you would have I mean, you know, I mean, you did have like Ric Flair and Dusty Rhodes and Jim Cornette and Arn Anderson all on the same show and everything like that. And they did, you know, so you did have. Better, you know. I mean, I would say generally even better quality promos than you have now, um, or Nick Bockwinkel and Bobby Heenan and everything like that. But there's some promos that you just remember, and uh, I thought this was this was one of them. I mean, this was, you know, MJF is is maybe the best promo guy in the business, and if he's not, he's, you know, in the top three. And this was his. This was the best thing he's ever done. So I'm going to try and give you the one-minute version of this promo, which would be difficult because he talked for about uh, 10 minutes. But he said that uh, when CM Punk showed that photograph of him and uh, MJF last week, he said that Punk said that, you know, to you, this was one of the greatest days of your life. To me, it was just Friday. And MJF says, he's in tears. He goes, you know what? To me, it wasn't just Friday. It was one of the greatest things that ever happened to me. He says, when I was a kid, I grew up and I had learning disabilities and, you know, I had a tough time in school. But the one thing that I was good at was football. And I was really good at football and I had all of these scholarship offers. But you know what? I didn't give a shit about football. I only cared about wrestling. And wrestling was a thing that I loved. I studied. It got me out of bed in the morning. And meeting CM Punk... It just meant every. He mentioned it was like I think he said it was 2007. He was like 12 years old or something like that. He said he was. Uh, he said he was 11. He did use the term 2007. I think he was juxtaposing a whole bunch of stuff. The 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 most moving stuff was when he. Well, we'll get to, to it. So the, the gist okay. of it was. So he says that uh, you know I, I I finally got to go meet this guy and it was so great, and I'm watching the shows and he's my hero and and uh, what was so amazing about this promo was he brought so much of his real life into it, but he did the thing. He was that fan who thought that CM Punk quit. He quit on him and the rest of the fans, and CM Punk was a horrible person for quitting. He said, man, when this guy quit, it just absolutely devastated me. And so this is this is the reason he wants to beat up CM Punk. It's just he CM Punk was his guy. CM Punk quit on him, and that was just like the end of all of this for him. And he went to school, and he went to college, and he was all depressed. And then one day he just woke up, and he decided, you know what? I decided that unlike CM Punk, I'm never going to quit. And he says, you can, you can make me bleed. You can choke me. You can do whatever you want in this match at the pay-per-view, but I'm not going to quit because I'm not like you, punk. I'm Maxwell Jacob Friedman, and I'm better than you, and you know it. And he's in tears, and the fans are like going crazy for this guy because it's like the best babyface promo by a heel they've ever heard. And CM Punk just walks down to the ring, and he gets in the ring, and he's he's just got this look on his face, and he just says, is this true? And MGF is just staring at him, and he goes, it's true. And he gets out of the ring and he walks to the back and, and CM Punk is just in the ring and he's just he's just flabbergasted this story that he ruined this kid's life by walking out. This was just fucking amazing. This was absolutely amazing. Yeah, so you missed the key point, which was he said that the day okay, so so when he's you know, this I again his story is that um when he's eleven years old, he makes the football team and he's starting middle linebacker and he's so happy because he didn't really have a lot of friends and now he figured he could have a lot of friends because they're all on the football team together so the next that friday on friday um he is at school and you know the all the football players are there and he thinks that they're coming to be his friend 
because you just made the team and they all have rolls of quarters and they're throwing them at him as hard as they can and going pick him up Jew boy and you know he just was broken hearted because of the you know the ethnic slur and that these guys were supposed to be his friends or he wanted to be his friends like just you know made fun of him and laughed at him and that night was the night he met the he met cm punk and how meeting cm punk changed his life and cm punk became his hero so um that was kind of like the deal um and he did get um I mean, he did the promo as a baby face and cried at the end. And I mean, it was so incredible because it's like, it's like, it wasn't like over crying. It was the perfect, like you, you see this tear streaming down his face, but it's not like out of control tears. It's like the, oh man, I'm trying to give a, the, the, the perfect example. I mean, it's like, I mean, the one that reminds me, and this is so dated. I mean, this is probably like a 25 year old reference, but, um, it's the, it's, it's the, um, the, um, when they would have, um, the TV commercial about littering where they would like, you know, somebody would like litter and they had the Native American guy and he had the tear running down his face. It was that super moving thing. And MJF... <laughs> this was longer than 25 years yeah, ago. Yeah, right, it's right, right. what, 35 years ago? <laughs> MJF, MJF would have no idea what you're talking about right now. I didn't say he was copying him. I'm this would be like the 70s. The, the Indian guy? Or the Native American guy? So anyway, he's got the tear going down his face. and, and uh, But it was just like MJF. It was the perfect tear. And uh, it's amazing that he was able to pull that one off. I mean, it was just uh, what an what an incredible deal. So, uh, yeah, this was absolutely awesome. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got twelve thousand episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.